Hi, my name's Harry. I am the founder and owner of two different marketing agencies. And my journey all began when I started busking in the streets in my hometown so that I could go and buy a camera. I thought I just wanted to take pictures, maybe film the odd thing here or there, but I ended up capturing myself playing music and that led to me building a bit of an audience online. Fast forward a few years and I was able to use that audience to earn money and to gain a lot of knowledge and contacts in the industry so that I could launch these agencies helping other brands and other creators do exactly what I've been doing. There are a ton of different things you can do to try and make your content stand out, but that in itself is a bit of a problem because there are so many options and so many people making content in certain different ways, you're not always gonna be the only one. We live in a world now where pretty much everyone is filming on their phone all the time, and they're doing that because of convenience, not because of quality. The problem with that is quality is often what appeals to us the most. How can you get great quality but still have convenience? Well, if you have a camera that's dedicated to doing exactly what you need it to do, then it's not going to be a burden to take that with you, especially if the reward is content that's going to do a lot better amongst your audience. So cameras like the EOS R5 or the EOS C70 are absolutely perfect in this regard. And the C70 is actually in many, many ways the perfect camera to use. Continuous face detection in the autofocus means that filming for social, for example, YouTube, if you're filming yourself, is really, really easy. The C70 has an RF mount, which means that you have access to the entire RF lens range, including my personal favorite, the RF 28-70. to Now, there are plenty more options in the range, but also if you want to use EF lenses, then you can use an EF to R lens adapter to put whatever lens from the EF range onto it. This camera is packed with a ton of different options for how you can shoot your video, but I'm just gonna quickly take you through the settings that I use. Now, I like to make full use of the Super 35 millimeter sensor in this camera, so that's my choice of sensor mode. When it comes to the main recording format, I've gone for XF ABC 422 10-bit, just so I can get some really nice color depth. For the main resolution and bitrate, I chose 3840 by 2160 long got, and there are a couple of different reasons for that. The first is that I wanted to reduce file size just a tiny bit, and the second is that I wanted to maintain the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. My custom picture settings were set to Canon Log 3, and finally for the frame rate, I chose 25p instead of 50p, just because I tend to find it has a slightly more cinematic feel. So I've got the Canon R5 here with me and I'm going to be trying to make a bit of a cinematic piece with an old bike that we found in the studio. I've gone for the 28 to 70 again because I want a bit of zoom range. On top of that, I'm gonna take the screen and flip it out just like this because I'm filming vertically. I've got the image stabilization on the enhanced mode as well because I'm filming pretty much entirely handheld, if not all handheld. And I'm in Canon Log 3, but I've turned on the view assist so that I can see it with slightly more regular colors rather than a flatter version of log, but that means that it will give me more flexibility in post. I find it really important to shoot with the edit in mind because if not, you can get to that process and sit down with your footage and realize that you don't have things that actually you wish you did have. So what I like to do is try and work backwards and think, is there anything in particular that I want to add in? Because I've thought about that already and the fact that that's something I'm going to do in post, I can make sure that I film that so that I already have that footage when I come to sit down and work with it. So I've come over to a punch bag in the studio and the reason why is because when you're trying to create video for social media, one of the things you need to do is grab attention. Take a tried and tested method such as something like slow motion, which the R5 handles really well with its ability to film in 100 frames a second. When that's slowed all the way down, it's gonna look so much more dramatic and hopefully win over even more people online. One really handy feature that the C70 has is built-in ND filters. And what that allows me to do is maintain a really shallow depth of field, even if I'm outside in bright lighting. More and more nowadays, audiences are looking to be immersed in the content that they're watching. And that could be in a number of different ways, whether they want to feel like they're there and the content is filmed in a first-person perspective, or maybe it's the story that really hooks them in because there's a clear progression and a clear storyline. And one of the main reasons why some of these social platforms and their new offerings, things like TikTok, things like Instagram Reels, have really boomed recently is purely because of the fact that they're short, easy to consume, and they're often fast paced because of that small length. And that's something that you can carry forward even into pieces of video that are designed for other platforms. You can still apply those same principles and try to increase the pace in the video to give the audience that thing that they desire. But the benefit of filming with the C70 or the R5 is that 
For example, when I went camping, you can just see all this detail in the shot, such as the smoke moving and the shadows of the trees and the people, but also the highlights of the sky, none of it's been lost because of that high dynamic range. It's undoubtable that you're gonna get a lot better footage and it's going to perform a lot better on social media. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And the one thing I want to say just before I go is that I hope this video has inspired you to get out and just experiment with cameras of your own. Try something new. Don't be afraid to get it wrong. Actually, the very nature of social video is that it's not perfect all of the time. So don't be afraid of a few mistakes because the doors that social content can open are more than worth a few stumbles.